Hello out there and welcome to episode 147 of the Michael vs. Jason Horrorcast, where we love to bicker, argue, and debate all things horror. Mainly one movie chosen at the end of each episode by The Devil's Wheel, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And last week, Jason kicked off the 2024 season by winning the first one on The Devil's Wheel. And this movie, I think... Uh, not only is uh, everybody should know it by now, but I think this actually caused a lot of trauma and a lot of kids in the 80s and 90s that have clonophobia nowadays today. I'm talking about 1988 Killer Clowns from Outer Space, uh, which if you're a first time listener of the podcast, spoiler alert, we're going to ruin the shit out of it here. It is 36 years old, so if you uh, uh, haven't watched it yet, I'm assuming you are not going to, but just in case you want to, pause it, come back, um, and listen along with us and rate and review. As always, I am your host, Mike, and joining me, members two and three of the podcast, Kirk and Jason. What's going on, gentlemen? What is up? What's up? up? Well, uh, I'm excited to dive into this movie, but before we can get into that... It is Pardon the Terror time. So, all right. So, this is a very special Pardon the Terror. So, I've been on these guys for the last probably six months to get together and put together their top 50 all-time horror movies. And I was going to do it for last October. I was going to do it for this October. And we finally got it together. So, we're good to go. What we're doing is we're kicking off the first five today. So, today is our rankings. And in the rankings, we're going to get through number 50 to 46 for all of us. Now, this isn't the greatest all-time. These are our favorite all-time horror movies. There is a difference. I I think that's a huge, yes, that is is a a huge difference. Because some of you guys out there, which will hate our uh, all of our, our, lists. our list yes <laughs> and i don't want to hear it because i think i will hear it the most from everybody yeah, but pr- it's probably, what do yeah, we like watching the most not what do we think is like the you know the the most intellectual property of all time right. yes but but both yeah, things are going to be different yeah those two things factor into it too a quality yeah. movie also can be scored very highly it just all yeah. depends so that's what makes this Pretty interesting. You know what, mm-hmm. Mike, since you spoke up, I'm going to lead the roll call here. <laughs> and I'm going to start with you, my friend. So, uh, all right. So I appreciate it. So, yes, we're doing five a month for our rankings. for All the yes, way up till October. Until October. So, uh, yeah, very exciting stuff. So, I guess, yeah, I get to kick it off. This is exciting stuff. So, coming in at number 50 for me. And maybe there's some recency bias in this. I don't know. But it actually comes from last year. And Jason, you're going to hate this. Kirk, I think you're going to be uh, on the wavelength because we really liked this movie last year. But When Evil Lurks from 2023, I have to say, you Great know, movie. how a movie makes you feel afterwards and how much you talk like it, it, it really goes into this. And I haven't stopped thinking about this movie since I've watched it. And there's just a lot of scenes that are uh, sticking to you know my oh, heart like uh, cholesterol. Movie. So that actually comes in at number fifty for me. It's not a bad pick. I'm with you there. Uh, did you check out my YouTube video I just put up? That's on when evil lurks on our YouTube page. On our I YouTube. absolutely <laughs> did. Yeah, I did too. Very good. Very, Very good. good. All right, Jay. What do you got for number fifty? Well, I can tell you right now, when evil lurks is not number fifty for me, but it <laughs> made, did 49. make my top. It made my top 1,000. I will tell you that. <laughs> good, good. I mean, it's, um, it's somewhere so in there. number number 50 for me comes from 2005. Uh, you know, we, I'm, I'm already did, blown away. I'm already blown away. Yeah, yeah. You know, we it's just did an presses. Eli Roth movie not too long ago. So here's another Eli Roth movie for you. But Hostel. Hostel, Hostel comes out at number 50 for me. So, uh, Kirk. And that was episode 50, 100 of our podcast. Yes, so, it was. Yes, it was. We'll yes, it one. was. All right, yeah, so me and uh, then I'll wrap it around the 49. So I'm going to throw a little haymakers on my number 50. And it's one of my favorite all-time movies. It's one of the best movies in the series. It has one glaring problem, but I'm not letting it stop it from being number 50. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I love that freaking movie. It just has one massive glaring issue. That's Michael the biggest Myers. issue of the whole movie. The but, mask. Are we talking about the mask? Yes, they the make mask. Michael Myers look atrocious. The movie is probably It's the wish, my uh, Michael Myers. The, yes. the the Michael the movie is probably the best Halloween movie of them all. It's just the worst Michael Myers. 
So that's what throws it all the way to 50 for me. Mm-hmm. I wanted to throw a little uh, right hand blow at Mike there because I knew he'd be shaking his head at me. And I loved every second of it. Well, so. as Jason <laughs> said, not no spoiler alerts here, but Halloween 4 did not make my top 50 list. Uh, <laughs> <anywhere>. 1988 <laughs> Halloween 4. All right. So number 49 for me. I am I guess I feel more like Jason these days because I'm staying in the 80s. 1987, this is kind of a like monster movie, and it's straight out, out of my childhood, Monster Squad. I wow. love Monster all Squad. Right, all right, all that right. That is a movie I can watch over and over and over again, and I love every freaking second of it, uh, Monster Squad from 1987. Jeff, I don't think I've seen never. that movie in 30 years. It. It's really good. 30 years. Hey, all I remember is Wolfman's got balls. Nards. Hey. Wolfman's Nards. Got Nards. 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 My bad. But I knew yeah. Wolfman had something. Um, so 49 for me. Yeah. Mike, are you ready? Like, I'm staying in the 2000s. What? What is going on? Yes. Here? Yes. I know. What the hell is going on? I here? feel like somebody hijacked your list and you forgot to proofread it. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do a, a sinister here at number forty nine for me from twenty twelve. Uh, sinister. This one um, really took me by surprise. Uh, you had was it Mister Boogie? Boogie? I believe yep. was the yeah was the uh, one of the creepiest looking creepiest entities ever, whatever of all time. Um, it really blew my mind. Um, and then the the um, Hawk, or is it? Uh, what's his name? Ethan Hawk. Ethan Hawk. Yeah, I thought he had a great role in this movie, so it was a good movie for me. So, Mike, that is a fantastic. Tell us your forty nine. You know what? I, know what I've learned that you're doing, Jason. You're just yeah. getting them out the way. Uh, all I think you put together your list, and you're like, <laughs> wait a minute, I got ten from the two thousands in here. They got to be fifty through forty nine. Uh, yeah, but wait, guys off my back. But wait. <laughs> You're right. I, I know. I know. I just, it just hit me what's going on. So you're from dusk till dawn, and then you're sinister, right? <laughs> no, I was hostile. 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 Why did I think from, from dusk till dawn? What are, you, uh, what are you paying attention to here, Clownzilla? All right. So <laughs> it's, not even on my, it's not even on my next one. It's just the weird part. Coming in at 49 for me is a movie that we reviewed. Uh, Kirk, you were not around for it, but it was episode 20 of our podcast, I think this, it's a meta movie, and it is so fun, so well done, um, great actors. Uh, the Final Girls from 2005 with Tessa Farminga, uh, Malin Ackerman, a bunch of people that you know and recognize. But this was kind of like a spoof on um, the Friday the 13th series. So well done. It is so well done. I love this movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But that's number 49 for me. Um and Jay, we have something in common. I'm staying in the 2000s as well as uh, I'm going through. But there's a theme here. So coming at number 48, another movie we recorded on the podcast, episode 79, I believe, Haunt from 2019. Uh, it is a uh, haunted house, uh, like an actual like Halloween time, you know, people going into haunted house movie. I just thought this was... So well done. Uh, I'm very excited for part two that should be coming out, I think, this year. And uh, I, I, it's maybe one of the best Haunted House movies that I've seen in a really long time. So uh, that makes well, my list. What was your number 49 again? I am uh, typing these in while, I, while we're doing them. Because we don't know each other's. So the, uh, I'm keeping track. The Final Girls from 2005. Girls. If you could play, pay attention, Kirk, it would be great. Well, I, I had to catch up there. My fault. Oh, it 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 wasn't from dust till dawn. <laughs> it's not. Just wait till my number forty eight. All right. Well, before you go with forty eight, I'm going to tell you what my number forty eight is. So here we go, Mike. To 1980, and I'm going to be the first to talk about a John Carpenter movie here. Um, we're going to go with the fog. The fog. The Fog from 1980. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis here. Uh, you know, Mike's favorite, uh, uh, you know, actor of all time was in this movie as well. Uh, you know, someone we just got some autographs for not too long ago. But uh, great movie back from the 80s. Uh, got to say the name. A lot of nostalgia. Got to say Tom Atkins. Come on. Tom Atkins. <laughs> yeah. Tom, I was waiting for Mike to say it. That's why I was kind of teeing him up there a little <laughs> bit. But, uh, you know, a little nostalgia here. Um you know, it's a classic, you know, The Fog. Um, 
you know, Adrian Barbeau was absolutely astonishing in this movie. One of my favorites from all time. So it, it definitely hit number uh, 48. Kirk, where do we stand at 48 for you? Ah, yeah, I kind of screwed up earlier. So number 48, 1996 from Dust Till Dawn. So <laughs> I was looking at a different list and I heard what you said. And I, uh, I just screwed it all up. So one screw up already down negative one. So from Dust Till Dawn from 1996. That's just a fun movie to watch. Um mm-hmm. But I'll go ahead and go to 47. Since wait, I wait, wait. Of... Can we just have a moment of uh, silence for Salma Hayek in oh. Dust Till Dawn? Is there a hotter actress in a hotter movie at the <sighs> right time? I mean, that was just... Yeah. It was I, just don't, a, I don't think there is. It's, it's an amazing scene. But uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino Beautiful. and uh, Clooney were amazing in it, too. But uh, it's a great yes. movie. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. No worries. No worries. No worries. So, all right. So, my number 47. Um, not a fan of the director-writer. I think... He, well, I don't think he went to prison for being a pedophile, but number 47 is one of the better monsters ever created in our recent days, 2001's Jeepers Creepers, the original. That movie should have been treated so much better with its sequels. It got one, maybe two-ish sequels that are any good. Third one's trash, but the original Jeepers Creepers is an all-time classic. I love that movie. It's so fun to watch. Very good movie. Yeah, it's a, that's, it is a very good movie. Um so episode 125 hits uh, number 47 for me. It was one of my wins from 1987, but near dark. Uh, love this movie. Uh, you know, Lance Henriksen at his best. Uh, great vampire movie. Bill and then Paxton. You, Bill Paxton um, with one of his funniest, funnest roles, I think, of all time. It's just it's a classic for me. It. I watch this movie at least once or twice a year. No lie. I mean, I've, I've talked about that already. It's a lot of fun. Um, Mike. All right. So um, coming in at number 47 for me, there's a theme here. We've already podcasted this movie. Um, actually, this was uh, seven. This was either 78 or 79. I don't know. This was right next to Han before or after. But The Collector um, from uh, 2009. It's from 2009. So uh, I love this movie. Uh, I love the sequel. And then I'm very excited for part three. That is, once again, it's been supposed to come out for about two years now. But The Collector is fun. It's violent. Uh, You don't think they're going to go as far as they do in this movie. And um, it's just a great all-around watch. So that's what comes in at number 47. Uh, Before you go go to 46. Sure, sure. All right, so Jason's got Near Dark, The Fog, Sinister, and Hostile. Mike's got The Collector, Haunt, The Final Girls, and When Evil Lurks. I'm rocking Jeepers Creepers from Dust Till Dawn, Monster Squad, and Halloween Forward, The Return of Michael Myers. I what feel is like you went in the f- wrong order on that, but yes, uh, if you were I, counting well, I went out 47, 47 48, back to 49, 50. That's 50. where we would be. So... <laughs> I think it all worked out the same anyway. Yeah, we counted it down. <laughs> all right. All right, Mike. What you got for number 46 and our number one on this list before next month where we do 45 through 40? So 46, Jay, I know you've seen it, Kirk. I don't think you have, but um, it's kind of like a little indie classic from 2014. It might still be on Shutter, but it's called Spring. Um, it is kind of a monster movie. It's a, Honestly, it's a love story, but... Just so well done and well crafted. Uh, I was blown away. But at some point, this will make its way um, onto the wheel. Uh, it's just a great movie. But uh, if you haven't seen Spring, definitely get ahead of it now. Because, uh, yeah, at some point, it, it'll be there. But uh, that comes in at number 46. And uh, my last movie that I am uh, talking about for this month on that. Jay, what about you? Okay, okay. So sticking in the 80s here uh, from 1981, a movie that we have not podcasted yet, but I'm pretty sure it may pop up on the wheel this year. Uh, but we're going to talk about The Howling. Um, you know, this Howling. is a this is like a classic werewolf movie. I would love to discuss this on the on the podcast soon enough. It's it's a great movie. It's a classic. D. Wallace Stone stars in this one. Um, it's it's really good movie. So Kirk, yeah, nice. Finish us out. 
The Howling's a good one. All right, so I've got two 80s movies, a 90s movies, a 2000 movies, and another 2000s movie. So we're, we're bringing it, Mike. Don't worry. But my uh, my number I got, 46. I got five 2000s movies is what I got right now. <laughs> well, you know, well, I didn't say we're, we're, we're fully on your level. All right, so my, uh, my number 46 is from 2016. So relatively new. It's a Netflix original. It's The Void. Uh, the Void was... I don't know. That movie just kept going there. It just took the next step every time. And it's definitely HP Lovecraftian. And I just love every bit of that movie. It just kept taking that next step. You're like, oh, fuck. They went there. And they just kept going there. And I really enjoyed it. So, But that brings us to the very end. Any comments on anybody's lists? The only comment I have is uh, this is going to be fun. Um, because we are going to be all over the fucking board um, yeah. with this. If anybody, if uh, you're a first time listener or you're just starting to catch uh, uh, on to us or whatever it might be, we are very eclectic in all our different tastes. Um, but this is this this is funny. And as I put together this list, it was funny because I was like, you know, there was so many 2000s movies on there. And when I say 2000s, 2010s, 2020s, yeah. 2000, you know what I mean? Like early yeah, 2000s. So you um, say 2000s. It's it's covering 24 years at, at this point. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot. That's why I, lot I, I think movies. I think you got to start saying 2010s and 2020s. Like yeah. you would say 80s and 90s at this point in time. Yeah. Right. But, you, you know, one thing I will say about the top 50 list that I love more than anything is that we could be ourselves. This yeah. is not something that anyone's going to judge us for. It's not anything that like Mike's anybody – us, but you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm but <laughs> but still, at the same time, this is this is our top fifty. It's yes, not true. anything that we have to, you know, explain to anybody. This is what we love, and this is why we're doing what we're doing. So I think this is a good thing. And looking at these lists, I'm like, yep, that's Mike. <laughs> yep, that's Jason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it just. Yep, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> makes sense. That, that, that's about right. So. That wraps up uh, 50 through 46. That means February is going to be 45 through 40. And we're going to roll this all the way to almost Halloween and where we'll do a countdown before Halloween, our top five. So stick with us every month. The second, usually the second uh, week is our rankings week. Uh, So hang with us and you're going to find out our best horror movies that we love and brought us into the horror uh, world. And, and hopefully there's something out there, even on these first five, that you're like, I haven't checked that out. Maybe yeah. I'll, you know, see. And then um, you can align with us on one of our uh, on one of our Maybe. web pages to uh, tell us why we're right or why we're so wrong. Um, to just- there is no wrong because these are our favorite, <laughs> not the they, best. This is true. This is a hundred percent, you know, subjective, and it's just favorites. It's just what makes you feel away. You know so, what time it is? I I think I think it's. Time to put a little uh, clock action on there and get a thirty second synopsis. So let's uh, Shit, let's head to that. the let's head to the main feature. And now on with the show. All right, welcome back. And as previously discussed, uh, Jason kicked off the twenty twenty four season and went. Well, he's one and zero so far, so uh, it matters this year because uh, uh, whoever wins the month gets an extra movie on the wheel. So, Jason, you won 1988's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. But the one punishment you get is having to do the thirty second synopsis. Uh, so so it's not so all bad. just you know wins and extra picks, sunshines and rainbows. Pay, you got to pay your dues, my friend. Uh, it is, and it's a do. I don't like to pay because I suck <laughs> at it. Well, that's what makes it fun. <laughs> yes. So for you, I, I, yeah, a hundred percent. I could go have you go every movie. I am not going to lie. All right, my friend. Uh, the next word that crosses those lips, I'm hitting start. So it's on you. Okay, so you got Mike and Debbie. They're up like necking and like this, like whatever it is. Uh, spaceship comes across. They go and look out for it, and obviously, like the farmer and Pooh are the first victims of like the killer clowns. So basically, chaos ensues throughout. These clowns just like get into the town there. Uh, get everybody with uh, like cotton candy cocoons. They're getting popcorn. They have like their little tricks they do with their puppeteers, or whatever. Police force goes out. Uh, everything goes bad. It's fun. It's stupid, but it's that great. Is time. I mean, it wasn't your best work, uh, <laughs> but you've done so bad in the past. It's not your worst work either. So I mean, yeah, you just yeah. land somewhere right in the middle. I just, I just want to know in twenty twenty four. 
Who says out there necking? <laughs> yeah, I was. I thought the same thing. I've never yeah. in my life been like, "Hey, are you, uh, those people were necking." You the... got to remember this it's movie was back in the eighties. You're not wrong. And the the I think the town. But you're in the watching movie it was actually from the fifties. But you're watching so it in twenty twenty four, so it's a but, little bit different. But they said necking in the movie. And so. I, and I th- and I think you get a minus one because you did use chaos and sues too. So those are the, those are the two. But uh, I always use chaos. Those and are the Seuss, trick. So. Those are the cheat codes. Well, I like down, my down, cheat codes because right, right. it makes me look smarter. Well, uh, uh, speaking of looking smarter, behind the screen. All right, so Killer Clowns from Outer Space is a 1988 American science fiction horror comedy film written, directed, and produced by the Chioda Brothers, even though I want to say the Chota Brothers, it's a tough and starring one, so. Grant Kramer, Suzanne Snyder, John Allen Nelson, and the most famous of all, John Vernon. It is only film written and directed by the Chioda Brothers, who also created the practical effects and makeup. The film had a budget of $1.8 million and made 48 48- or from sorry, forty three million in the box office. Wow! And most of the success from this film came from VHS and eventually DVD. Obviously, for sure, it concerns a clan of evil extraterrestrials and resemble clowns. They arrive on Earth and invade a small town in order to capture, kill, and harvest the human inhabitants to use as substance for, for drinking their blood through swirly straws. Killer Clowns from Outer Space was filmed in Watsonville, California, and the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. <sighs> The film utilizes practical effects, including rubber suits. The score was composed by John Massari. The film received generally positive reviews and had been considered a cult classic. The film has been considered a cult classic by Rotten Tomatoes with an average score of 76% based on 25 critic reviews and an audience score of 80, I'm sorry, 60%. IMDb rated this at 6.2. There have been some sequels in development. But it's been development hell, so we're waiting to see what happens. Um, NBC Universal Sci-Fi announced that this was in talks to license the rights, but we will see what happens. Interesting, interesting. I can't believe it's made that much money. Um, yes, yes. And most of it, like I said, came from VHS and DVD. Um, I do have a couple of facts if you guys want to hear them. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. So, number one, uh, there was a $2 million budget went into this uh Ironically, it went into all the production costs. Um, the clown and visual effects were all done basically on the backside just by making things out of rubber suits and so on and so forth. Um, it was uh, the filmmakers did it at no cost, which was kind of cool. Uh, number two, it was mainly a hit because of the cult classic on video. Uh, it was huge with action figures, DVDs, and T-shirts. That's where they made a lot of money on the back end. And lastly, um, it was the originally the clown Zilda that we saw at the very end was to be a stop motion animation, but no budget left. So they had to do a suit instead. Kirk or Mike, do you have any other facts that maybe I might have missed on? Yeah, I got, I've got a I got two. Do you have any, Mike? Um, I, you know, I'm fresh out of facts oh. this week. Guys. Mike's, Mike's not uh, a, all right, Mike's Kirk, not what a, you got, man? Mike's not a fat guy. All right, so uh, two of the trolls and Ernest Scared Stupid were actually the clown masks from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I love So they Ernest just Scared repainted uh, Ernest oh, Scared shit. Stupid masks and made them into the troll mask. And number two, and Jason, this is one's probably going to be your favorite, and I am shocked you didn't steal it. The theme when Clownzilla came down, the music that was playing, that was originally written to be Jason Voorhees' theme and Jason Lives. Yeah, I knew that. I, I saw that one, but it was long, so I didn't want to write that one down. <laughs> I mean, it's one sentence. The Clownzilla theme was originally written for Jason Voorhees. The one I saw was three <laughs> sentences, okay? <laughs> That's true. That is, that is pretty long. Well, and then nice. I did a quick count up of the kill count. I got 36 deaths in this movie, if you count everybody that was concluded. I got 49. Oh, so there is a... That's a discrepancy. There is a discrepancy there, which mm-hmm. I, I'll go with yours. I don't really care. Well, guys, <laughs> um, now it's uh, we're going to get into the rate and review here. And uh, here at MVJ Horcast, we like to use a 1 to 10 rating system. Well, at least in the new year we are. Um, and uh, 1 being a terrible, terrible uh, display of events in that category. 10 being a cinematic masterpiece. Um and we're kicking off uh, – uh, we've changed our categories a little bit here. So our first category is Story Beats. And, Kirk, why don't you tell us what that entails? 
Yeah, story beats. So we we, we kind of went through and changed all the categories. One, because we had a lot of redundancy in a lot of these categories. We were kind of bleeding over our scores. So we want to try to get away with that as much as possible. So what story beats is, is going to be your story, your concept, your acts, especially the third act of the movie, just anything revolving around those three subject matters. So it's pretty simple, but it kind of more keeps it to just that. I like it. Cool. I like it. So, like Jay, it. it's your movie. We'll let you kick us off here. Uh, where are you falling, you know, on, on some of the stuff here? Okay, so like, let's talk a little bit about the story. I, you know, me personally, I, I think it's very simple. Um, in a way, I kind of was – I think it was kind of stolen a little bit from The Blob. So The Blob came out in yeah. 1988 as well, but the original Blob – um, came out in the 50s and i think the story is kind of stolen from that where you see a falling star um it's a you know an alien crash lands takes over the town um it's kind of the same concept to me um it, it, that's just kind of where it comes out it's very goofy um which i think makes the story though i think the point it's the point of the story well I, well I it, what it, you guys think about? Yeah. It, it has to be goofy because it's called killer yeah. clowns from outer space right like right. you can't make a serious movie about killer no. clowns but i don't think the story makes really any sense um i definitely mm-hmm. understand the the stealing part yeah it definitely feels like where the blob felt you know falls in the woods you know the old man night of the comments right or night of the comments yeah. uh like it's all that same storyline. Yep, that's the same story beat. Yep, it's the right. exact same. Uh, when it's when different I, from that of the comment, though. It's uh, close. Kinda, it, his it's, point. It's it's in the same it's, neighborhood. It's, this it's, is like it's a, a bunch of kids out in uh, Jason right. necking, um, you know, necking, somewhere, necking and then the something woods. falls. But you know, it's Don't even be jealous. It's even slither. Jealous. You know, what I mean, years later, before. it stole it. But uh, <laughs> but the story doesn't make sense. And uh, I I mean, I like it at points. But people walk through this movie and one of two things happen in every single scene. Either nobody is afraid or can distinguish that these clowns are monsters and they just walk up to them like normal people. Or everybody just finds it very normal that there's a circus in the woods and walk straight into it. Everybody. Right. Um, and the fact that these clowns excited. are like seven feet tall. Like, like <laughs> nobody is. I mean, they're showing elderly and young kids and, you know, yeah. regular people. Like, and nobody's afraid of these clowns. And the cops don't take anything seriously, which maybe is the only true part of. But they're uh, clowns. Yeah. 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 I, yeah but they, they don't the, look like clowns. The but they're sto- clowns. The story is very simple. It doesn't make sense. But I don't think that that is not the cornerstone of this movie. The concept Correct. is basically. The blob with clown, clown costumes or neither comics with clown. It's just clowns. That's the concept. The third act's just goofy. All the acts are just goofy and laughing. Uh, one question I want to ask is, is this more or less of a horror movie than Ghostbusters? I would suggest that Ghostbusters is more of a horror movie than this movie. Because this is I more of a comedy. I think you're full of shit. <laughs> I this think this you're is full mo- of shit. This is more of a comedy. <laughs> Uh, th- no, this this is definitely. Uh, okay, I mean, definitely so were there were there were there forty seven deaths in Ghostbusters? But then we have a question. A few podcasts were ago, there forty seven deaths? Well, in no, I, I had 30, were there any deaths I had, in I had Ghostbusters? Thirty nine. Maybe I don't know the the. Uh, 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 All right, even thirty nine. Were there any deaths in Ghostbusters? Marshmallow Man came through the city. There's probably a few deaths. But were there point, any deaths? And How many deaths did you see in this movie? <laughs> That's my you question. Saw, you saw one person get his guts drinked up. One guy get hit by pies. I don't know. It's it's just a, it's not what they Dude were. You got his head for. cut off, punched off, and they show the blood from it. Yeah, I, was, listen, every was every death after in this Jason. every every death in this movie is no in this is, movie. They're, no, no, they're no, no, goofy. But, but was that before or after Jason? Who who did it first? Uh, Jason did Manhattan. it second in 1989. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, w- I want to say this came from... before uh, uh, yeah, Part Eight. This was eighty-eight. Uh, part Part uh, or Manhattan. Jason takes Manhattan was well, eighty-nine. Well, while you guys are talking about a bunch of movies, uh, the, other than this one, let me talk about uh, I. One thing I really did like that they did in this movie is the use of the circus structure throughout. So yeah, oh yeah. you have yep. um, uh, the popcorn, the pies, the obviously the cotton candy, which looks like a, a giant um, rabbit's foot. Um, the puppet, the hand puppets that they do, right? Like they even mm-hmm. have a scene with dance feet across the wall. Like they yeah. literally take everything from clowns and circus and they incorporate it. Uh, my favorite being the balloon animal dog that they, yes. uh, that they take to find, you know, to sniff out the people. 
um, even fireworks, right? Like everything. I think it was very smart how they did that to incorporate that in the story. So they even, yeah, they it, even had a throwaway yeah. line in there where they said, maybe this is where we get clowns from is because they visited us once before. And it's like every movie kind of does this. Oh, this is where we get vampires because they visited us once before. And it just, yeah. it's kind of making fun of other horror movies is what I but, think. But that, if you, it's great. Right. But if you also think about it, you know, and, and I know a lot of movies did this in the past. I mean, even we go into real life and you had like uh, Gacy who took that clown concept and did whatever. But it's like I, I think they take that innocent clown concept and this is where they actually make it creepy. I mean, they looked creepy, these clowns. That's why, I, you know, I agree with Mike on the whole simple the story. Like, it's stupid because how can you not tell the difference between a, a clown in a circus and a clown that looks like the way these clowns look. But I still think they took that and make it a little bit creepy. That's so, just me personally. So Jay, uh, I'm going to come to you then first. So yeah. on our new scoring system, one to 10, where are you putting our story beats for this movie? I was a five here and I was a five mainly because, you know, like I said, the story is simple. Uh, the concept was hokey, but it worked for me. And especially with the way they took the clown stuff, like you talked about, the biggest thing that we did not talk about, which I did not talk about, the thing that took away from me was the third act, the whole Clownzilla thing. So, yeah, yeah, Kirk, I'll come to you next on that. This this is a hard movie to score for me. It just it just really is because the the purpose of it and what it's trying to do was diff- was just different, right? So, I gave this a three out of ten. I don't think this is a strong side of the movie. Uh, but that being said, that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I'm just trying from 2024 to review it. So, I I highly enjoyed it. It just the story beats are off. Yeah, I so I agree with one of you guys, Jay. It's you. Uh, I'm a five here. Uh, I I wanted to knock it more, but Kirk, to your point, I'm really using both of your logic in here. To yep. your to your point, it, it's almost like a trauma movie, even though it's not a trauma. As in, like yeah. it's it's going for exactly what it got. So it's not trying to be the shining, you know? So uh, like I said, the way that they incorporated all the circus stuff throughout, I thought was clever concept it's stolen but i mean i don't mind the concept of it it's just the story made no sense so i subtract a bunch there so um i'm a five there which takes us to our uh, next category and uh, i'll describe this one so this is uh called the arc and what it stands for arc acting relatability and character development so we're kind of combining it all into this and kirk we'll kick it off with you where, where are you here all right this is a hard one again. So it's a hard movie to rate. I, the acting is just silliness. That's 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 the only word I can throw. Every person in this movie is just silly, but that's what they're going for. So do I hit them for that or do I approve them for that? I just so arc is the acting relatability and character development. So the acting eh, relatability. Looking back at it from 2024, when I was a kid, I'd probably rate this a lot higher because I was, I was just having a good old time. The character development, there's there's no, really no such thing, right? The the love triangle. And so this isn't definitely another non-strong point of this movie. Um, and I don't, I don't think there's any secrets about it. I don't think any of us are going to score it very high, but it's it's just goofy. That's that's the only way I can really say it. Just, it's just corny goofy. Yeah, I yeah. so... I think they're likable, right? Like, I think Debbie's likable, and I think Mike's likable. The only person that's not likable is uh, uh, Sheriff Mooney like, or Cop Mooney, whatever his name that is. Was, that's how he was. Ri- that's but but that's how out. no, but that's but that's how that's how he's written. So he's not right. supposed to be likable. But the acting is not like great in this movie at all. Um, Curtis Mooney was part. probably my favorite character of the whole. Yeah, thing, yeah, so. he, he I like how he's far. kind of a dick, but yeah. he was over the by top. Far. He was over the top dumb. But once again. That's just, but he like, is in every movie he does. Yeah, that yeah. that is that was that is the true. same character he played in Animal House. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just you know that's who you get with John Vernon. So John Vernon. Yeah, like, but <laughs> when I look at like the development of the characters, um, you get a little bit of the love triangle, right? Like the main three between Dave, <sighs> Mike, terrible. and and Debbie. But it's weird because I'm thinking these two kids are in high school. And the cop is a cop. So how was he dating the girl in high school? Like that was in my brain the entire time of like, how does that age work out? I was thinking that same thing. And and I was very confused by that. And then they don't develop anybody else. Uh, If I was in the situation, I wouldn't do any of the things that these people do. 
So the relatability ness was kind of out on it, and then the acting so so. You know we're what I mean? Out, we're just we're, we're coming at this movie with a logical thought process on the killer clowns from outer space. It just yeah. it's it doesn't. Yeah, you, you got to just remember yeah. the name of the movie. You have to, <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. I'm kind of like the last category. I kind of hit it for that, and you guys kind of a little bit forgave it for that. So yeah, what do you yeah. think, Jay? And, and and I'll say this: like I, I agree with both of you. It's. This is one of those – This is it's a cult classic more than anything. Yep, so you just have to take it for what it is. Uh, personally, I love Mooney. You know, I love John Vernon. That's why I said earlier, you know, in my, you know, behind the screen, like the he famous – the I mean, best this death. Is, this is yeah the puppeteer, but this this is who he is. This is the character he plays in every Mooney or Mooney <laughs> in every, every movie. movie, and this is and he's great at it. Uh, personally, I I thought the Terenzi brothers were a lot of fun. Um, you know, they were they're the ice cream com- truck Yeah, they're vendors. an actual comedy duo that they hired for this movie, and I thought they were. Oh, I want to scratch my eyes out every time they're on the screen. Yeah, th- but they were fun. They made the movie fun. But personally, yeah. I think the acting was horrible. Uh, there was I didn't relate to anything in this. Mooney, I had some fun with. That was about it for me. Yep. So. Kirk, I'll come to you first here. Uh, what do you give the arc of this movie? Yeah, I'm not going to be nice to this one. It just it's <laughs> it's not what they're going for. I gave it a one. I gave it a one out of ten. It's just you know, Curtis Mooney would probably Oof. be the only person I gave that one to. Uh, but everybody else is just I want everybody to die. So um, I, I'm lower here, but I'm definitely not. Uh, I, once again, they they're not trying to. Be serious and but you, so I but give you it still three. have to rate it. You still have I, I, to rate I, it. I am, it. I am, but but that's why I'm giving it a three. Uh, once again, yep. three out of ten, thirty percent, not good. But right. I don't think it's a one because a one is somebody that's trying to do something one way and it goes completely sideways. And I think this is a little bit different on that. So that's just where I fall. Um, I think but I think we're, bad we're saying bad. the same thing. Bad is bad. Um, yeah, Jay, bad where are you bad. here? Yeah, so I'm kind of in between. I'm uh, I'm a two. So. For me, I'm a two here. It, you know, yeah, I, like I said earlier, it, it I'm was. A two, I'm a two. Oh, forget about it. I'm a it. two. I'm a two. But the the acting was terrible. Nothing to relate here. The character development. I mean, it, this was this is a classic '80s cult classic style movie. You just you take what you get. Yep. Yeah. I I I concur. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I think we can also concur that it's time for category three of our big five here, and the new category. Kind of like the old one. It's called visual appeal. And Kirk, I'll give it back to you on this one to explain. Yeah, again, visual feel. So this is going to be your effects, the visuals, the cinematography. The gore is now thrown into this one. Just everything that kind of you're looking at through the movie, what, what they're showing you on the screen, that is going to be your visual appeal. All right. So um, I, I'll I'll kick us off here on uh, the visual appeal. And the, I, I think we need to talk about the clowns i think they look great after all this time i was blown away by um by just how good they looked i mean there's some goofy (laughs) moments of this movie and uh you know some of the deaths are clownish uh no pun intended um but the clowns look great i mean what do you guys i i mean i hopefully you're with me on that one yeah i agree with you yeah i agree with you so some of the visual effects uh, are definitely outdated. Uh, but that being said, there wasn't a lot of CGI. And, you know, the guy driving in the fake car next to him, uh, there was some stop motion in this. Um, but overall, I thought for a movie, $1.7 million, $1.8 million, whatever it was, they made the most of it and they made some iconic costumes. Exactly to your point. Yeah, but, like, but even everybody... the, outda- the, the outdated stuff didn't look. T- like the the lightning and no. all those movies and electricity always looks bad, right, um, and right. that looked bad. But like the 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 stop motion, which I think is probably the popcorn that's which going lo- across the floor, look good. I love like I love uh, are, are the I puppets love coming motion. out of the toilets? I mean, but it bad. wasn't stop motion. So the stop like motion, I said earlier, they couldn't afford the stop motion. The stop motion was that they did use was when he was making the hand gestures and the the shadow oh, the, on the back yeah, wall, okay. yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the okay. dinosaur that was, ate that the. Was it. That was it, yeah. So that was it. I don't know. It, it is. It is definitely an interesting visual experience, but it's very iconic as well. Um, I, I think it is. It does look dated, but it is iconic. Like everybody knows those masks. Um, when we went to what was it, Spooky Empire? 
the the brothers were there and they they had lines the whole time that this movie still holds up to this day and i think a big part of it is the visual appeal yeah yeah, yeah. The, well the, the when when jason talked about the cult following on this yeah, one for sure. it is it is real um yeah especially yeah. your point the chioda brothers were at the uh the the last horror con we went to and uh, this movie there's not been any sequels. There's not been a remake. There's not been anything. Thirty six years later, uh, it stands. They're trying. The time. Yeah, they're they're trying, but it's not. They're out trying. There. It's not. Out it's there. been. It's been in the works since twenty sixteen. They're trying, but, but yeah, like could, I said you earlier, find, you can you find have... their collectibles everywhere. Yep. You That's can what find. I was gonna say. Yeah. Yep. Oh, sorry, but you can find. No, their no, you're collectibles fine. You're fine. You're fine. You got it. Everywhere there is, people want Clownzilla and the clowns and the little setup playhouses. People buy this stuff still to this right. day 30 some odd years later which is insane yeah and and this like goes back to your like your friday the 13th your nightmare on elm streets you got all this you know secondary you know outside sources that's making money for like these films you know that are bringing yeah. in a lot of revenue and and budgets and things like that so this is another one of those movies and you get a lot of that from these cult classics whether it's a good movie or a bad movie it still brings in a lot of that you know profit from different you know styles of organization things like that on the outside this is huge for that the practical effects in this movie hands down think about this for a second i said this earlier they used all of their money on this production for paying production not on the movie everything that you saw in practical was done by the people directing this movie. Yeah. They did all this. So this is what they were known for too. Huge. So that's this is yeah. what they did prior to making their own movie. They were an effects company. The I can't even say their last name if you can say it for me. The Chiodo. The Chiodo brothers. That was an effects company that decided to make their own movie. So they took the pennies they had, rubbed them together, and put together a pretty good product. Well, I, I still want to call them the Chode and, brothers. And the, 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 they're not the Chode, Chode but they'd probably be upset about that. But the one thing we didn't talk about <laughs> is the uh, inside the tent in the circus. Like when Great. we get into yes. where it looks like the spaceship, still looks pretty cool. Like yeah. it still looks, you know. It Honestly, though, can I say something about that? That kind of like threw me off a little bit. So the part that they went into the door that rotated and they go out and they've got that. And they look down and they've got that whole like beam going down and everything. That reminded me of Star Wars. <laughs> Luke, or no, I am your father. <laughs> that whole thing, that whole yeah. scene, when yeah. when Luke goes into that room, looks down, and that's where he sees Vader coming up. I mean, that, that's the same concept. But I like how they did that, though. It's it's fun. Yeah. Well, uh, this one will come to me here for scoring first, and I'm curious where you guys are going to be. I'm a little higher here, um, especially for how well I think this held up. Um, uh, when we look at the killer clowns, it's what the story's centered around. They gotta look good. They look great still after thirty six years. I like the 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 bathroom scene. I think it looks great, and I think the the actual spaceship for the most part on the inside looks good. I'm a seven here, um, out of ten, uh, maybe high, maybe just right. I don't know, but uh, thirty six years later, I'm still in awe. So uh, that's where I go with it. Uh, I don't know who it goes to next. To be honest with you, Jason, go for it. Yep. Um, so I, I, you know what? I, I went a little bit higher here myself. And ironically, Mike, we are the same. I'm a seven as well. Um, I thought this was the movie right here. I thought the effects in this were absolutely great with the practicals. The visuals were great. Uh, the cinef- cinematography, like we talked about, you know, the taking the, the, the circus and putting it all over the place. I, I thought the town looked good. You know, it was it was ripe and it, it felt right. So um kirk where you at yeah so this one i scored probably 15 different times it went up and down and up (laughs) and down and up and down and then one thing stood out to me more than any other thing is every time they wanted to make the clowns creepy they had them smile and the smile (laughs) they had to be able to do that effect and show their teeth and grin i mean you know that's not a person that's moving that mask the mask is massive so the effects of that was just brilliant it looked great It, it triggered that all right something bad's about to happen I'm right there with you. I gave it a seven as well. I think it's an iconic, iconic look. Um, and they did a lot with little. So I, I appreciate it. All right. So that takes us to category four, um, which is completely new to this. Um, but it is sound design. And we're talking about the score of the movie, the audio, the engineering, 
everything that has to go in with sound on this. All movie. these '80s movies, Jason's gonna be like, ten out of ten. It's got Stan, this person into it. I, I, Jay, Jay, tell tell me, tell me about sound design. Ah, here. Tell me about I will, I will, I will. So I, you know, the score. Um, we talked about John Masari earlier. It was composed by him. It had a great sc- score. But hey, I'll tell you right now, the theme song. Uh, was from a, a famous like uh, punk band back in the eighties that I was a huge fan of. The Dickies, hand quote fo- famous, hand quote. Famous. <laughs> yes, famous for me, baby, because yes. I love the Dickies. But uh, they did the song you do "Killer love the Clown." Dick. I do <laughs> the Dickies. Oh. But anyway, uh, so the nice thing about this, the lead singer of the Dickies did not know what this movie was about and wrote the theme song, and he nailed it. So, which kind of shows you how simple this movie really oh, was. I, but, I, uh, I, I, th- I, th- I literally thought he watched the movie and then, you know, scored it or got a, you know, copy. No, the... he wrote this. He wrote this. They made the song before they even watched the movie. That's which how is simple surprising. this movie was. Which is surprising because yes. I, I watch all my movies. I'm, I, I am I am that old now where I put closed caption on all my movies. I do and too. when they have a theme song, they, they, they put the words up there. And it feels like he was narrating the movie yeah. a little bit. So it felt like it went right with that movie. So that's surprising if you that watch, he did prior to. Or not watch. I apologize. If you read anything about the Dickies and the song Killer Clowns, that's the first thing it says is the lead singer had no clue what the movie was about. And they wrote the song. That's probably how they wrote the movie. They're like, oh, this guy made a pretty good tune. Let's uh, let's uh, <laughs> put the movie around that. Hey. Hey, maybe they changed the script. Yeah, maybe. I bet you they did. I mean, any yeah, what... any any movie that has a song that is centered around, you know, that's made for the movie the or whatever it might be. It, the stuff. It, 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 yeah, this, well, that was a great uh, throughout, but yeah. it just knocks it up, right? Like we talk about mm-hmm. Halloween 3 yep. and, you know, like just certain things oh, like yeah. and. And this is like a jingle in the song. I I liked it. I liked the Killer Clown song. The actual audio throughout the movie was, I I don't think it was anything spectacular. But once again, we're 36 years later and it wasn't off. It didn't feel like it was dubbed. It didn't feel like the, you know, the the, the sound quality was bad. It was engineered well. Um, So I, I, I thought they did pretty well in this category. Yeah, I like the score. Um, the the Dickies song was pretty good. It was fun at the beginning. It it felt very time appropriate. Uh, the music, the actual uh, instrumental music throughout the was was good. The sound effects and the mixing and the within the movie was kind of forgettable. It was mm-hmm. okay. Nothing, nothing to either be mad about or sad about or happy about. But it's overall like. I, you know, I, I feel like the score has kind of lasted. Uh, it has not to the much as maybe the the clown masks because everybody had picked that out before. But bam, 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 bam. I mean, everybody knows what that was, right? So it's if you're a horror like, movie, it sounded buff. like it was Sanford and Son, real quick. I mean, maybe oh, wow, they stole that too. I don't know. The, this is uh, <laughs> this has turned into a completely different podcast. Uh, Hey, Sanford, that's a great show. Well, that was a great show. That does kind of sound like Sanford. That was a it does. Show. It does. As you, were, as, as you were doing it, it did it to me. I have no clue. Yeah. As I listen to this back, I'll be like, oh, I don't even know this thing. Um, yeah. So, Jason, on sound yeah. design, back to you. Yes. Where do you got this puppy? I, I give this a seven again. I, I You know, I, I thought the score was great. Obviously, as we talked about, uh, the Dickie song was great. Uh, even the sound effects and the mixing throughout this, it, it was cheesy, but it, it worked for the movie. So I, I I deducted points from the cheesiness, but it's a cold classic. Kirk, what about you? Yeah, there's a lot to mix in and stir around in this one. So the sound effects, I really pay attention to that, especially with my horror movies. Um, I thought it was good. I think it's memorable more than it is good. Like it's more iconic than it is great. Um, I don't quite put it as high as the visual appeal. Uh, so I gave it a six. It's slightly above average. So uh, I, you literally could not have said it better for me. Um, I'm a six for the exact same reasons, um, uh, which is still a good score. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, above average. Five is yep. average, right? So, mm-hmm. so that takes us to our last category, which is carnage. And Jason, why don't you uh, tell us what carnage means here? So carnage here, we kind of talk about the kills. You know, we talk about the mayhem that happens throughout this movie. You know, how much fun are we having through this movie? Is there a lot of fun with this movie? So, I, you know what? Yep. I, Kirk, this one, we're going to start with you. Yeah. So uh, as there is a ton of kills in this movie, I don't feel like that is what this movie's like 49 to 39, depending on 
who's right in this. Um, I don't think that's the main point of this movie. Like you see very little of it. And it's mostly people getting wrapped up. You see one guy with a melted arm. You see the cat. I mean, I'm listing some stuff, which sounds a lot more than it is, but it's more comically done. Uh, this is all about the fun. This is just kind of laughing and seeing what kind of fun way they can do the next kill or the fun little footprints that lead you into some or the mime that they're doing. It, that, it This movie is all about fun. That That is all it is in this movie um the, opposed to what you said jason earlier on i liked the clownzilla coming down i liked the the little car being shot out because it's just it's it's a comedy for me this is more of a comedy for me and it's funny it's laughable i had a good time mm-hmm. watching it um it's not a, like a carnage type movie like uh, uh, texas chainsaw massacre in the bus right it's not just mayhem in that bus but you're having a good time and you're laughing yeah, but but i think i think this this is almost like what we're talking about with carnage all right so yeah because it's it's fun um yeah this is where i think the movie, anymore i think well yeah but like the i mean if you got clonophobia you know like this is uh this is definitely gonna scare you but we have a guy get his head uh, knocked off we have people being turned into cotton candy we have one of my favorite things in here, a shadow puppet dinosaur that eats a group of elderly people. Um, you have Mooney that's turned into a puppet. That was um, the, best one. the the pie is thrown at the, the guy and then he melts, which once again, like you said, it's all comically popcorn. The the popcorn that's uh it's <laughs> all comically pulls the guy into the trash done. can, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's all comically done, but it's fun and the mayhem that goes with it as these clowns are unleashed on the town and people are like, hey. That just seems normal. They all deserve to yeah. die. Um, nobody feels yeah. really overly bad. And I always wondered, do they really die or do they come back after the clowns leave? Who knows? But um, uh, I think they're dead, right? Like um, They loaded them up in the ship and they are now cotton candy rolls. I mean, but those people, well, yeah, I guess the, the main Well, when they took the, the cotton candy off, you saw their faces were a bloody, like, melting mess. They were it just, melting. I it mean, was just very convenient. They put her into a balloon, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but she was yeah. she was fine. She was in a balloon that yes. everything was good, and they were able because chaos didn't ensue for her. They, yeah, chaos, chaos didn't ensue; did it just not, not enough. Ensue. But I, but I think I think the carnage piece of this once again, this is what makes it the cult classic. This yeah. is what makes it all the clown stuff that they did, and that's why I'd really love to see more done with this movie because I think there's just so much more that could be done in today's world uh, with yeah. this movie and just a little bit of a budget. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to really say much more. You guys nailed it right on the head for me. Um, it's This movie is just fun. It's fun. You you have fun through this. It's a good comedy. Uh, you know, Kirk, I know you and I kind of varied a little bit on the deaths. Um, I just I found a site that had them all labeled down, and I was counting every single cotton candy person. <laughs> so I, I got to 49, maybe, I don't know. But uh, regardless, 30, 40, 50, it's a lot of fucking deaths. <laughs> yeah. Um, the mayhem is nonstop throughout this movie. It's fun. It's just a lot of fun. So, Kirk, what do you rate? Yeah, so I didn't rate this on kills because I didn't think that was the point of even a high body count, which is strange to say. Um, this is all just about the fun. I think this is the point of the movie. Um, the parts where you get the footprints on all over the walls, the mimes, just all these creative ways to make this a uh, a comedy horror i'm gonna say comedy horror um so i gave it an eight out of ten this is my favorite category because i just thought it was it's a good time uh, type movie uh it's not an easy movie to score uh and that's why i like our new uh review beats because it's just it kind of separates it a little bit better to where we can pick what things actually matter and d- just don't kill a movie like this. Cause in our old way, this movie probably got a score way, way lower because everything is yeah. too overlapping and too serious. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm not an eight, but I'm a seven. Uh, I still, I, I, th- I think this is very well done. Once again, I, I didn't rate it just on kills either. Like this is carnage. Right. And, right. but I did think the kills were clever. Um, and, but I, I just, I, I think the fun, <laughs> It, the fun's a 10 out of 10, right? Like, then the kills are wet, right? And it just averages right. out. But th- this is still uh, a tied for my highest category on here. Uh, and I, like I said, I think this is the reason it's a cult classic. So, Jay, uh, where do you land? I'm right with Kirk, actually. I gave this an 8 as well. I think this this movie was so fun. It just keeps you wanting to watch. You know, there, there's, there are a lot of movies that you watch that are even cult classic or 
80s style, 90s, whatever. You just kind of get bored with it after a while. This one, it's kind of like, okay, what can they possibly do next? And you get a lot of that throughout this movie. The deaths keep coming. The the fun keeps coming. The stupidity is always there. It's just, it's a very fun movie for me. So it's definitely an eight for me. All right. So uh, uh, okay. while I use Hell's Calculator to navigate myself <laughs> through here, um, <laughs> we are, we're still allowing bonuses in our new structure, but our bonuses, you know, used to be a point up, you know, up, uh, give it or take it away. We're doing the same thing, but it's 10 points, right? You can have up to 10 points plus or minus same, uh, same idea there. So are you guys giving any bonus points? Um, and if so, for what? Yeah, so I'm not given anything. I I felt like I really gave the fun its due, the sound mixing, sound design, and visual feel. That's the strength of this movie. I really hit the story beats and arc very, very hard. So I don't want to take negative away. So I just did a, a straight zero. Jay, what about I, you? Yeah, I was gonna say I agree with Kirk. I I didn't give any bonus points either. I I wanted to, but I agree with Kirk here. I think we kind of went as high as we could possibly go with everything that we right. gave. All right, so we're all close, right? But what I'll give you? so Kirk, you oh, oh, I'm sorry. I am not giving any <laughs> bonus points either. Yeah, I, assume, I, I was just sorry but... to push uh, I am not doing any bonus points. Uh I don't think anything extra was done in any right. you know that I can that I can pull Above up them, now, yeah. now that we have all the new categories. But um so Kirk, I will start with you. You were the lowest. You scored it a 25 out of 50, which equals a 5.0. Um so yep. just right in the middle, um even keel. Uh, I was, uh, next one up, uh, I scored it to 28 out of 50, which equals a 5.6. And Jason, you were a 29 out of 50, which equals a 5.8. So our final scores right for this movie, exactly. 5.0 to 5.8 is where we, uh, uh, range here. And I think Jay, you said, uh, 6.2, 6.0 for IMDb, yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, yep. you know, so I think we're kind of, I think, yeah. I think we're, yep. we're in line, um, uh, with uh, where everything kind of lands there between the the five and the five dot eight, but I still have fun. Maybe watch. I should have given it. Maybe we should have given it a bonus point just for the simple fact this might be the first movie I put on the wheel that we are all on the positive side I, of a Jason movie. That's I, that is very probably true. No, because I mean we've had like the Nightmare on Elm Street three and so I take think we away were take away the nostalgia, take away films. all the good movies. <laughs> yeah, take <laughs> and, away and take away the- those <laughs> movies like the 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 simple ten movies that I throw on the wheel. This yeah. is the first time. That we were all on the five. J- Jason's or feeling higher. some kind of way because last week was our end of year podcast, and uh, we rank the worst <laughs> movies of the year, and a lot of his were. Uh, I got know. beat up. <laughs> but but that's I where beat you live too. That's, I beat myself up too. That's where you live too, though. That's what you enjoy. You like those yeah, those you're right. trash eighties. So but yeah. but th- but this yeah. is a good uh, trash eighties um, uh, movie. It's so, got a lot going yeah. for it, but it's it it. It's a hard it, one to score. It does what it does. It does. But guys, uh, we're we're uh, we're wrapping this in cotton candy as well, and shipping it back out to outer space, and we are moving into next week and uh, finding out what is our next movie to review and taking a ride. The Devil's Wheel. <laughs> So for our Devil's Wheel portion of events, what we each do is we take three movies, we put it on the wheel, we spin it, uh, and I, you know, I got to get out of saying that is that because there's now a also a Devil's Wheel spot on the wheel. So there's ten slots. We take nine of them. The Devil's Wheel takes the the one, whatever it lands on. That is the movie we watch for the week. And if it lands on the Devil's Wheel piece, we go to a random generator and we just got to watch whatever it lands on. The last one was The Craft. Uh, so uh, and. You know, fun. So yeah, he um, got us there. Uh, he got us but, there. But it's, yes, uh, it, it matters more than ever this year because uh, we, we have penalties for the winners and the losers on a yearly basis, on a half yearly basis. But on the monthly basis, Jason's up 1-0 right now. And how many... Yep. How many more weeks do we have left? Are we <clears throat> Including this one, we have three. So we'll have this spin and two more spins in this month. So if Jason wins again, that's going to put me and you in a tight Th- bind. That means to... the worst he can do is tie, but then right. nobody wins and the devil wins. But uh, yeah. uh, he'd be he'd be in the lead. I mean, he's already in the lead, but yes. one to one's much better than 2-0. So Jay, you were the only one obligated to make a change on the wheel. Uh, so what are your three movies going into this week? 
All right. So we're going to stick with Phenomena from 1985 on here. The movie that I'm not seeing that I'm looking forward to hopefully watching soon is Street Trash from 1987. And I'm putting a new one on here from 1984. Chud, Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. Oh, all 80s movies. Surprise. Well, it's, 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 it's shocker. I, yeah. But listen, all Jason's favorite movies are from the 2000s. So I wonder how, um, I wonder how these score. <laughs> it was three to two. <laughs> remember that <laughs> three to two on eight. I, I only yeah, but remember that was the only, only two you the, had in the fifty. I only remember. I only remember the two that you said. Here we go. Um, Here we but go. Kirk, what <laughs> are we go? What are your uh, What are your three? Yeah, mine are staying the same. So I got the Empty Man from 2020. I have not seen the Empty Man. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, the Ninth Gate from 1999 and Death Note from 2017. All right, and I'm keeping my movies the same, too. So the movie I have not seen before, Can't Believe It, 13 Ghosts on the Wheel. Then we got Strangers, Pray at Night, and Psycho Gorman, Just for Jason. So um, all I that's called left Psycho to do, Gorman, Just for Jason. I, I, it is. Uh, the wheel is spinning right now. What you don't see is I'm flicking Mike off right thumb. now. Look, Watch see his thumb. thumb. Yeah. Look, yeah, can't she's going to cheat to land he's on cheating. him, so I don't go 2-0. Oh. Yeah, I would. I mean, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, unfortunately... <laughs> Oh, oh so Jason has just gone. Uh, it, the, what's funny is because you know I always um, refresh the wheel. You know you can uh, uh, reorder uh, it. Reorder it basically. So uh, it just missed Psycho Gorman, but realistically, it was in between Phenomena and Street Trash. Jason would have had the next two, so uh, it was really going to land on him almost no matter what. I mean, is it always about to hit something? I mean, at, at the uh, point of a wheel. Yeah, but it's like it's close. Uh, not that you guys can overly see, but it's close. I mean, yeah, it's pretty in the middle to me. All right, something, so we need... something like a phenomena is uh, is happening next week. I don't even know anything about this movie. Uh, well, I don't, I don't want either. to. I don't want to. Um, Dario Argenta. Dario Argenta. Oh, Jesus Christ. So here we go. Um, <laughs> so wait, wait. What year was this from, Jay? Nineteen eighty-five. All right. So we are uh, we are going back three it's more. On, years it's on Shutter. Shutter or Screenbox. It's on one of them. Okay. All right. So. Phenomena is our movie, 1985, Dario Argenta. So for everybody out there, same bad time, same bad channel. We will uh, reconvene and see if uh, we all kind of enjoy this movie like we did Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I have a feeling that it might not be uh, the same. Wavelength. It's Dario Argento. And if, if you've ever seen a Dario Argento movie, uh, Suspiria. Don't knock it until you try it. You, you know, It's an acquired taste. It is a bitter beer to swallow. Very much. Well, we will we will find Good out. Uh, the yeah. fact that Jason's Jason, have you seen this movie or not seen this movie? I've seen this okay. three times. Okay, I, I got worried that this was the movie. You, the street trash, what you haven't seen? I say, yeah, street trash. If trash. you hadn't seen this yet, I would just assume it's bad because you've watched and literally this is, every eighties movie. Ever. This is Jennifer Connelly's first ever movie, by okay. the way. Okay, uh, well, then we're getting better. So, yeah. all right, well, uh, that is our episode for this week. We look forward to, uh, I mean, it sounds like two first-time watches on that Phenomena and a fourth-timer there. Jason is now up to nothing. Kirk, this is getting dangerously... Mm. He's going to get an extra one next month, and that's going to yeah, put us in the hole. I, I mean, there's only so many 80s movies, right? Like, there's got to be... <laughs> He's got to be running um, out Maybe soon. I'll throw something sooner on for you guys. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you know what? any other ones. I, don't, I doubt it. I doubt yeah. <laughs> it. Um, but you never know. But uh, exciting nonetheless. And uh, for those uh, that want to talk with us and give us, um, well, hey, give us your countdown, your top 50 with us, right? Give us your, uh, you know, 50 through 46. Or maybe there's other parts of Pardon the Tear, right? Each week is going to be something different. So we still have questions. Is it horror? Um, uh, uh, lots of great, you know, aspects of this show. Or you just want to talk to us and tell us, uh, give us movies to put on the wheel. Uh, that's something we do as well, right? We always throw that on there, but easiest ways we're on Instagram. Uh, we have a great YouTube page, which is always updated with the uh, little videos and clips and the podcast and all that great stuff. Or the easiest way is just uh MVJ, uh, horror on uh Facebook group. I think that's, I ask each week cause I don't know MVJ if it's horror is the Facebook group. Yeah. There we go. That's the <laughs> easiest way to, yep. to talk with us. I'm sure we will put our 50 through 46 on there so that way you guys can uh, look at those as they go. We'll kind of keep expanding that out and see whose list. I want to hear from you guys. Whose list mm -hmm. is more up your alley? Uh, it's okay. It's probably not me. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I know this ahead of time. I know this ahead of time. For your first five, probably not. Probably not. 
probably not. But it's you. It, but it, it's but it, listen, it's me, on, it's me on paper, and when I look at these movies, yeah. I'm I mean, like, when Evil Lurks was pretty one. sticking good. So, it, well, I'm glad yeah, that it was you the like top one thousand. I'm glad me, you so like my you. number fifty. Um, yeah. It was <laughs> <laughs> <that's> good. <laughs> From Dust Till Dawn was great as well. Uh, uh, I, yes, that was my number yes. forty-eight accidentally. That's I, a top one thousand for me. Forty didn't slip right there. I mean, it's just every is it top fifty, and then automatically there's just a wide ocean of 950 movies for your next top 1000 jason is that just how it works i got about 10 15 movie special i know you asked you jason just, that but i think it'd be impossible to do a top 1000 to be honest with you uh, well, yeah, yeah. You, well, of course of course um <laughs> rank them yes but guys, that's why i just say everything's top 1000 listen uh i uh appreciate everybody out there rocking with us for 147 episodes or as many as uh you've rocked with us for and uh, just remember, uh, cotton candy may be sweet, but it can do more than rot your teeth. We'll see you guys next week.